Take a look at this. Watch out for flying fish. The Utah Division of Wildlife Resources releasing this video showing the process of aerial restocking. Planes drop thousands of fish known as fingerlings from the air uh, into high elevation Utah lakes in an effort to restock the water with marine life. I'm going to bring in Faith Heaton. She is a spokesperson with the Utah Division of Wildlife. She joins us live here on video. Uh, Faith, thanks so much for being here with us on live now. Uh, this video has gained quite a bit of traction online. Is that surprising to you? So it's actually funny because we, you know, aerially stock every year by plane, um, these high elevation lakes throughout Utah. And we've shared this footage, you know, year after year and, and you know, several times on social media. And it honestly does tend to kind of go viral each time. Um, but this time has definitely drawn, I think, more attention than normal. So it's kind of funny because we're like, this is what we do every year. And for some reason, it's just going gangbusters this year, but it's been kind of fun to see the, the amount of attention it's gotten. So let's talk logistics of this. The main concern for everyone who watches this video is how do the fish survive? What happens to them? That's too high. What's your answer to that? Yeah, that is probably the most common question that we get. Um, and actually, so kind of the reason that we you know, aerially stock is because we can't access a lot of these areas by truck, which is our normal stocking method. So we use the airplanes because they're just really high elevation. There's not roads, there's no way to get there, but we still want to provide the opportunity for anglers, you know, coming into some of these backcountry areas to be able to fish. Um, and so we just make sure we're only stocking fish that are about one to three inches long. So these smaller young fish are so small that the air actually slows down their fall. And so leaves kind of floating through the air. So because they're falling a lot slower than maybe a bigger fish would, um, that allows them to survive. And there's actually really higher, there's really high survival rates um, from doing this type of stocking. Um, and we're able to kind of monitor this because each year we do some surveys. We'll have staff that'll hike in and check it out and do netting surveys to see how the fish are doing. And there's always a lot of fish. And most of these areas didn't have fish before we started aerially stocking. So it kind of shows that, you know, they are surviving, they're doing okay, you know, it looks dramatic, but the fish, the fish are okay once they fall. When did you guys start doing this? I'm curious, what's the background behind all of this? Yeah, so we've actually been doing this for decades. Um, mm -hmm. We started aerially stocking as early as 1956. Um, it's, it's anyway, and it's kind of unknown, like, when it was first attempted, but that was kind of the first, you know, successful one here in Utah, at least. And yeah, it's been a common practice here. And like I said, it's mainly just because we can't reach a lot of these areas with trucks. Um, before that, they would like strap, you know, fish tanks to horses and they'd try and get them up that way. But that actually had a lot less success rate, a lower success rate, because, you know, the fish that it just took too long to get them up on horseback. And it was kind of a rough ride. They're getting jostled around. So the planes, it's fast. It's really quick. It's really efficient. We're able to monitor their temperature, their oxygen throughout the ride. And so the, like I said, the survival rate. For just Utah or do other states do this as well? You know, that is a great question. And I'm actually not sure on the answer of that. I was trying to look and see, cause I'm like, we can't be the only ones that do this. <laughs> um, but maybe just because we're the ones that share it on social media and kind of promote it. We're the only thing that pops up when you're trying to research this. Wow. But I do think other states do this. Yeah, I don't think this is just unique to Utah. We just kind of are the ones that go viral with our footage. Yeah, it's really great footage, I have to say. The, the drop and everything, it is very aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> but I saw this swirling all over uh, social media today. You know, how often do you guys have to do this on a year to year basis? Yeah, so typically um, we try to stock one region all at the same time just to make it more efficient. We'll kind of do one drainage area and we rotate those on a three to five year basis. Um, but some of the lakes within those drainage areas, there's obviously some that are more popular for fishing and people will hike in and get out into the back country, go overnight camping. Um, some of those areas we end up doing on a yearly basis. 
So moral of the story is if someone is out and about in Utah and they see flying fish coming in from the sky, the world's not ending, it's just restocking season. Exactly, yeah, they could just witness something that's really unique that keeps going viral, but yeah, nothing to be alarmed about. We're just providing more, more fish for people to enjoy a fun afternoon fishing in the high elevation areas. All right, Faith Heaton, thank you so much for being any other messages to all the people who are watching this curious about this video? Um, yeah, just, you know, once again, the fish aren't harmed. You know, this is a safe practice. We wouldn't do it if it wasn't effective. So, yeah, we're just, again, trying to provide a, a fun kind of unique opportunity for anglers to get out and enjoy some fish in th some of these higher areas that they might not have been able to otherwise. All right. Thank you so much for, uh, you know, softening all of our fears about these these fish and their safety. You guys are taking care of them. We appreciate that. Uh, we'll maybe speak to you soon, maybe next season. <laughs> okay. Sounds great. Thanks.